Well, hello, YouTubers, and welcome back to the Holes Mitchell channel and another episode in the woodworking series. Today we're going to be looking at duct work in uh, dust collection systems. And so rather than run around and try to shoot a bunch of video footage, I just took some stills uh, around the plant to highlight some of the things that I'm about to talk about here with the duct work. Now in the last episode, you know, what we covered was on flex hose, plastics, you know, metals and so forth, the grounding of the ductwork. Well, today we're going to talk about uh, some of the, uh, the bows, the arches that you make, you know, the corners that you have to round. And so we'll be putting in little, uh, you know, still pictures in with monologues to, to give you a little better idea of what's going on. So the first thing that I'd like to talk about is the efficiency of your blower system or your dust collection system. Now, uh, for the home gamer, um, you know, most of us are going to be buying, you know, the ABS, which is fine. It works well. Um, I'll be going over here to the to whiteboard here in a second and demonstrating some of the, the, the pluses, the, the pros and cons of using ABS uh, in your, in your duct work. Now, it does work well for the home gamer. Uh, it'll probably never wear out. Uh, just be aware that, um, you know, with the corners that you have to round, you'd want to create more of a sweeping arch, kind of like what's coming off this blower right here. Okay, as you can see, um, that pipe, that, that uh, discharge pipe, has to go up and over some other ones. Now, the ABS pipe fittings are generally, you know, pretty sharp corners. And so you experience some, uh, some losses due to recirculation and eddy currents in the pipe. And so let me move over here to the whiteboard and kind of illustrate a little bit more uh, what I'm talking about. Well, I realize this is kind of a, uh, not a very good representation of the two different types of elbows. Now these are both 90 degrees. So um, you have your airflow <coughs> coming in, say from this side going around the corner here. And same thing over here. Now, as I mentioned, you're gonna get some recirculation losses and eddy currents. And that's gonna occur right here until you reestablish laminar flow um, further down the pipe. Now if you make, uh, th now this is a very sharp, this would be your typical ABS fitting for example. Now if you look at this uh, long sweeping um, um, bend here, you still get your recirculation losses, however they run out fairly quickly and they're only limited to a very short run in the pipe. Um, you reestablish laminar flow much earlier than you would in this guy right here. Um, now, why do, I, why do I make mention of this? Because this, this uh, corner right here will cause about a 5% loss in your the efficiency of the system. This is a little less, this is between two to three percent. Now anytime you have a, a 90 degree bend in your pipe, you're going to lose efficiency. That's just the nature of the beast. And so it's, it's un, it, you know, you can't avoid it. You're going to have um, these bends in your pipes. And so you just got to figure out, well, how am I going to construct this? So my tip to you is if you can get these 22 and a half degree fittings, these 22.5 degrees, you take four of these fittings to put them together. Now you're still going to get, you know, some eddy currents and stuff along here in this pipe with those, with these 10, 22 and a half degrees, but there'll be a whole lot less than this, this 90. Now you can do the same thing with 245s, so that would work as well. It's just not quite as clean and elegant as, say, for these uh, 22 and a halves. So let me reposition the camera here for a second. Now you've seen the, the you know, the, the pros and cons of, of using ABS pipe. The other thing that you're going to experience is some wear and tear on the outer periphery of the pipe. 
Now, like I said, the average home gamer, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to wear that pipe out anytime soon. Um, if you're doing a lot of woodworking and stuff like that, uh, you might eventually down the road. Now, if you make this the the corner, uh, you know, a larger sweep that wear is cut down considerably because otherwise you're going to be uh, experiencing wear uh, just right after the bend or right at where the pipe joint meets up with the pipe and that's where you're going to see most of your uh, your abrasion in, in that elbow because that material is kind of coming around you've also got a little bit of a recirculation loss up in that upper hand you know in that upper corner um, and so that material is just kind of tumbling around in there. And that also creates a little bit more of a noise uh, picture. So you're going to experience a little, uh, little more, a little bit more noise in your uh, ductwork than you otherwise would if you tried to make a nice uh, long sweep. Now, as I mentioned before, laminar flow. Now, what is that? Now, laminar flow, it's, it's, we kind of extrapolate that from hydrology, and that means nice, smooth flow. Now, if you're familiar with Victor Schauberger's work, um, water doesn't want to flow laminally. Uh, I'm trying to pronounce it here. It's, uh, it's quite a tongue twister. But um, laminar flow is kind of a smooth flow of water or air within a certain parameter, you know, within a pipe. Um, Victor Schauberger found out that it wants to spiral and I'm surmising that's probably more due to the Coriolis effect. That's what you see when you create the whirlpool in the bottom of the sink or when you pull the plug and the drain starts, you know, it starts swirling around the drain or in the bathtub. Um, this is caused by the Earth's rotation and the um, material um, resistance, internal material resistance of the water, you know, or the air. It's a long, boring story. If you want to look, uh, look it up, you know, you can check it out in, in, uh, in Wikipedia. It's, it's a kind of a dry subject, but it does play a role with the efficiency of your, uh, of your dust collection system. It's just the way it is. Now, the other thing I want to talk about, too, is the um, now the other thing I want to talk about is also uh, the necking down of your pipe. Now as you go along, now if you have multiple um, intakes on a, on a ductwork system, like say for instance right here on this planer, you have multiple pipes coming together uh, or going up to a main collection system so um, what you have to do is in order to maintain a velo the same velocity all throughout those different pickups is you start necking down your pipe and you, you can calculate that out um, it's it's actually quite simple you know you, it's uh, r squared you know uh, r squared times pi is the diameter and so every time you bring off let's say your your main is like eight inches and you're going to take off four inch pipes um, that will tell you how many pipes you can take off or you go down to three or however you know whatever size you're trying to maintain and so that next step will uh, be that much smaller than that original uh, takeoff. So if you go down to um, from eight to four, or you take off a four inch, um, nah, I'm trying to figure me if I'm getting this a little mixed up. So your, your main is eight and your, your first takeoff is a four, then you just subtract that uh, cross section of that four inch pipe from the eight inch main and reduce down to the next size that is called for you know that that you know that you come up with from that from that calculation and so I'm just gonna just grab something out of the air say you're, you're you know you're reducing from eight down to six now and then you take off another four inch uh, takeoff then you're going down to you know from six to, to five inches and then from five to four and so on um, so that it gets kind of you got to calculate that through um, if you're doing just you know 
the most home gamers are not going to be running multiple machines at the same time. So the whole notion of, of this type of uh, multiple uh, pickup really doesn't apply here, but um, what you're going to see is something like this. And so you're going to have your, you know, your, your pipe coming down, your collector pipe, and then you're going to hook up your, um, your flex hose to the machine. Now, you want to keep your flex hose also, again, as straight as you can, or the, the, the bow as, or the sweep as long as you can. Now, this S-curve, like right here, Now the other thing you can do is also you can run you know branches of your main, um, and this is what most guys are going to be doing. They're going to be uh, branching off and just running uh, the same diameter main to each machine because they're only going to be working at one machine at a time. You know the, the you know the possibility of you know say like the wife or you know the brother or whoever coming in or the kids coming in and, and using the the you know the suction system at the same time as you know, for most guys, probably not all that great. So it's uh, one of those things where you're going to try and maintain um, that same suction to each machine as you're working it. And, you know, that's fine. And so you have, you know, branches like this right here. So as you can see in this in this last picture, there's you know that that diameter is pretty much the same, going from one branch to the other, and of course it you know it's switchable through a blast gate. Now and that's another subject here that we're going to be covering right shortly uh, is blast gates. This next picture also shows you um, a blast gate. It doesn't look like one, but rest assured it is a blast gate right there at the you know at the end of the pipe. So this is uh, generally, you know, within vicinity of the machine. So that way you're not trying to find, um, you know, you want to keep them as close to the machine as you can. So that way when you turn on the machine and, and, and get ready to run it, you don't have to go running all over the shop to, to try and open up a blast gate and then, you know, close it off when you're done and then open up, you know, try to figure out the next, you know, step. Keep your blast gates as close as you can to, your, to the actual point of origin. Uh, that, that you can. Um, of course, you know, a flex hose. Now, a rigid connection like this right here is probably going to be out of the question for most home gamers because most guys, you know, they don't have the room to work with and so they're kind of bound by uh, shop space and they have to put their machines on on casters. Now, personally, I'd never do that just for the simple fact the the tool marks and stuff. Um, you're never going to get a satisfactory cut picture in your in your product. And that goes for planers, it goes for table saws, it goes for band saws, especially for band saws because they're so top heavy. You run the risk of actually you know tipping the damn thing over. But um, anyway, uh, you know most guys are kind of half. They're, you know, just by virtue of the fact they don't have the room to work with, they have to keep their machinery mobile. And so the only option they really do have is to either lay a flex hose or, you know, push the machine closer to the blower or the blower close to the machine and then hook it up with a flex hose. Now, at the end of the, the dust collection cycle, now we, we've, we've gone up to the blower. We've already talked about the blower, but here's a picture of a cyclone. Now, as you notice, uh, the one pipe goes straight up and, you know, it's got those 90s in there. If you can avoid that and just sweep your, just gradually sweep your, your uh, discharge into the cyclone, you're going to up the efficiency quite a bit. And you want as much velocity of the material going into the cyclone, and that way the centrifugal force will force a lot of the fines out against the wall of the cyclone and then they'll settle out eventually and just go to fall down into the funnel. Um, I can't show you the inside of one right now, um, sometime later on, but 
there's a pipe that extends down almost down to the funnel you know there's the the, the the entrance is way up top of the cyclone and then right as the funnel begins there's the exit exit pipe for the for the air that is entering that cyclone because down at the bottom you know you, you have a positive um, air pressure in the in the thing and so you've got to let that air go somewhere and in modern plants they you know run big air filters and stuff like that they really don't use cyclonic action anymore um, just you know for dust discharge a lot of clean air uh, laws kind of limit how much uh, fine particulate matter that you're allowed to emit and so a lot of outfits like this one I work here for um, we have to install large uh, filters uh, to mitigate for any of those f that, those fine particulates that otherwise would leave the the cyclonic uh, action part or the cyclone um, under normal co operating conditions. And if you've ever noticed, you know, like your home gamer, here's a picture of. This isn't a home gamer machine. This is actually a, a, a pro machine, but nevertheless, uh, it has one of those filter bags. Now, we've seen these things before. Um, you know, a lot of guys have them. They have that filter bag, and that that middle ring is actually your cyclone, and this is what uh, causes that centrifugal action uh, to take place, and then force the material to fall down in the collection bag, and then the rest of the air is uh, discharged up through the top of the cyclone through the through the dust collection bag. And you're going to get some uh, fine, some really, really fine stuff, usually under two to three microns and finer, that will make it through the filter and then go back into the shop. But, you know, that, that's neither, well, it, it's a problem, but it, yet you've mitigated for the, the bulk of the dust that you're creating. Now, some people do additional filters, air filters in the shop, which is not a bad idea because there's going to be some dust generation that you're not going to be able to mitigate for in your dust collection. So, but you can retrofit a cyclone with uh, such a filter bag and, you know, or duct work, you know, duct your uh, discharge into a filter bag or a large filter and, you know, recapture that shop air, especially if you're if you if you're running heating or air conditioning in your shop, and have to try to uh, keep that heat in the shop or that cool air. Um, well, YouTubers, that's a wrap for this episode of the woodworking series and dust collection systems. I realize this monologue is you know quite incomplete. There are. Uh, a whole host of aspects that go along with this subject and it gets quite in depth. Um, there are specialists out there uh, that cover this. It's a science unto itself uh, because you're moving air and a solid all in the same time which kind of changes the dynamic where it acts a little bit like a liquid. Um, it, it sounds bizarre but when you look at the um, the pumps, in, uh, you know, the pumps in air quotes um, they look a lot like a water pump and so the piping is similar um, the um, pressurized water pipes for example they don't they do have those sharp corners but usually if you can you know you try to make the the corner as long sweeping as you can because when you go into the hardware store you know there's there's various fittings that have different um, well, not angles of sweep, but different degrees of sweep, uh, where the, the the 90 degrees is covered over longer uh, longer sweep areas, so to speak, um, and so a larger radius. Um, that's what I'm looking for. You know, the the that 90 degrees is on a, on a larger radius. So you again, you want to keep your radii as as long as you can, in order to establish laminar flow within your tube, and then uh, eliminate a lot of that abrasion that occurs in the corners and then also those eddy currents which create noise and then also loss of efficiency. Um, now you, you're already plagued from the start w with these uh, 
with the um, with the blowers that that are rather inefficient to start with because they don't have the face cone to increase the efficiency of the of the open faced impeller or you don't have the closed faced impeller with the appropriate tube in order to maintain uh, the, you know that those things are almost they're not 100% efficient but their efficiency is is really up there in the high double digits whereas an open faced impeller is you know you've got eternal recirculation losses within the volute, within the you know intake and the whole bit and so um, your El Cheapo Harbor Freight Grizzly uh, blower system or you know will will you know display those classical recirculation losses and so if you're confronted with that right from the get-go you want to try and eliminate those in your tube is if you can so that way you maintain you know enough suction to where you're not having trouble with uh, your pipes plugging up and you know that kind of thing um, so with that I hope you were able to get a little nugget of wisdom out of this whole uh, monologue that may apply to you uh, or your system that you're trying to set up in your home shop or just try to improve on what you've got so if you have any further questions by all means put them in the comment section below I'll do my due diligence to try to get those questions answered so with that thanks for stopping by um, I do appreciate all the new subscribers and thank those folks who are coming back for more and more and we'll hope to see you guys all again very soon.